Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is uh, it's it's nine o'clock on a Wednesday, which means it's time for a hidden gems. Now, this is where I take a uh, this, but this is basically where I take an old trick. Now, it might be something that was in a book or a magazine or an online lecture, uh, or it might have been a published trick from years and years and years ago. And I bring it back to the forefront and I try to tell people about it because here's the thing, and I mention this every single week, but I'm going to mention it again because it's very important. We stand on the shoulders of giants. And and every single magician around the world, they're looking for that latest and greatest trick that's going to turn them into a superstar. While in reality, some of the tricks that are absolutely amazing have uh, have been around since time began. And we search for that latest trick and we don't look back at some of the awesome tricks that have come before it. So the whole point of this series is for me to spotlight to you tricks that are really, really good that you might not have seen before. And that's what I'm doing. And today I'm going to be talking about Smash and Stab by Wayne Dobson, or the close-up version of Smash and Stab, um, which he bought out many, many years ago. Now, I've checked online. These are still available. Um, Wayne still lists them on his website. Uh, I've seen a couple of them pop up on various different Facebook groups. It is something that you can still get. It's a version of the classic Smash and Stab, but it's a close-up version. And I'm fairly sure, I haven't spoken to Wayne about this before, but I'm fairly sure that these were either developed by or made by Colin Rose, but I might be wrong. I've had one of these for years. I mean, it must have been about 10 or 15 years ago um, that I saw Wayne at a convention. I'm sure it was an international convention. And I bought these from his stand. And it's not the sort of thing that I perform all the time, but it's the sort of thing that I've done regularly throughout my career. And it always gets a really great reaction. Now, if you don't know what Smash and Stab is, it's the idea of having uh kind of uh, a, a spiky thing right so you've got a spiky thing and you cover it up with cups and the idea is that you smash your hand down on three cups one at a time and and the one that remains is the one that's got the uh the needle underneath it or whatever it is that you're using uh the version that i tend to use on stage is either shattered by scott alexander nailed it by scott alexander or the pain game by John Allen. Now, all three of those, in my opinion, for stage, are the best version of the plot because when you're performing on stage, um, you know they, they use big spikes. You know the, uh, the the nailed it, which is the one that I tend to use the most, and uh, Scott, um, uh, John Allen's version. Um, the pain game, they both have really big spikes, right? And you put them in a bag and you smash your hand down. And they're also both completely safe. It's very difficult to mess it up, which is, I think, the most important thing with a plot like this. You've got to make sure that you don't make a mistake. And we've all seen those videos online where magicians and performers have made a mistake with this prop. And, you know, I've seen versions of this before where it like uses electronic readers or it uses sort of magnet detection. And I wouldn't perform those really because... The problem with doing that is you're relying on something out of your control. And with both smashed, uh, with both nailed it and the pain game and, and um, uh, shattered, it's completely safe. Without going into methods, it's completely safe. But all three of those routines are only routines that would work on stage. Um, but even if you made a mistake, you wouldn't hurt yourself or injure your hand because you're never actually at risk. Now, this close-up version is probably the best close-up version that I've ever seen. And there's pros and cons. Now, the pro, it, it is incredibly safe. However, when you see the performance, you have got a real bullet. So this is a real bullet that's embedded into a real base. I've got them over here. So you get four bases. And one of those bases here has a bullet. This is a real bullet that's built into this base, right? So if you smashed your hand down on that, that would cause serious injury. Now, unlike the pain game, unlike Shattered, um, unlike, uh, unlike Nailed It, if you smash your hand down on this, you are going to hurt yourself. With, smashed, with, with Shattered, with, with the pain game, with Nailed It, if you smash your hand down and you get it completely wrong, you're not going to hurt yourself. The one that I tend to do on stage the most is Nailed It because that's my favourite one. Yeah, I'm just a, a big fan of that and it is 100% completely safe. This, if I make a mistake, I'm, go I'm going to injure my hand. It's as simple as that. However, and that's something that you need to be aware of, but the method 
is so easy in terms of, it's one of those things that hides in plain sight. And what I mean by that is if you don't know what the method is, this will completely and totally uh, fool you. You could look at these for hours and not see what the method is. But once you understand the method, it's almost impossible to unsee it. It's a little bit like that old thing that went on Facebook a couple of years ago with a cigar and it was a wall and there was a cigar in there and you're looking at the wall and you can just see the cigar, right? And you just, you can't see a cigar anyway. You get, they, you know, the caption said, look, you'll see a cigar. You can't see it. But then when you're pointed out to it, when people tell you where the cigar is, you'll, you'll never be able to unsee it. It's the same with these. It's a very, very safe method. However, it is prone to human error. And what I mean by that is if you're drunk or intoxicated or just stupid or not paying attention or something like that, if you smash your hand down on the wrong one, you are going to hurt your hand. You're going to injure your hand quite severely. But having said all of that, it, you know, as long as you're concentrating, this won't be an issue. But the reason this is the best version for close-up is because that's it. You know, all those other three versions that I talked about and almost every single other version that I've seen those versions are designed for stage. It's not something that you could do close up. This is something that you could do close up. It takes up very little pocket space. It's just this. You put it in your pocket and you put some, um, the, the covers are little McDonald's sauce packets. If you've ever gone to a fast food restaurant and you get those little um, sort of cups that you put ketchup in, that's what the covers are. So you go to uh, like a McDonald's, you steal about 100 of those without anybody looking, you take them home, you've got this and you're good to go, right? So you can do it over and over again. You smash four of those up every time. But if you're going out doing table hopping or something, and when I did restaurants, I did this all of the time. I made this a big feature of my restaurant act. So I would literally just lay these out and I'd go into this whole thing. And it was great to be able to do this close up. And the restaurant that I was performing in, they had these little packets as well. They had these little covers as well, which was even better. Um, now, if you've not seen a performance of this, I'm going to show you a performance of it right now so you can see exactly what it looks like. And then when I've done the performance, um, I'll talk about what's so good about it. And what I have here are little coasters. Okay. One of them is slightly different from the others because one of them has a bullet on it, welded in place. You can have a look at that. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, that is a bullet. Yeah. Now, here's a question. If I smashed my hand down on that as hard as I could, do you think that would hurt? Yes. Try. Yeah. Just have a go. I think it would. <laughs> so this is the idea. I'm going to try and do the ultimate test of working out whether I can read you or not. Oh, dear, dying. Because you're really clumsy. So these. If this goes wrong. These fit. It's going to make a over. great video, though, dude. It'd be messing these, this one up. These fit over here like this, you see. And when they're over, you can't actually tell which one the bullet's under, right? Right. So I'm going to look away. You're going to mix these up however you oh, see fit. Dude. And you're going to cover them up with the things. And then you're going to tell me, and I'm going to turn back around. But you need to know where it is. I can't know, but you need to know where it is. I don't like this one. Take your time. Okay. Do you want to mix them up some more or are you okay? Okay. Now, I've never done this before. Brilliant. Read the instructions. It's meant it comes to with the instructions? Mm. Or is it don't maim yourself? It's, it, it comes with more of a warning, to be honest, but, you know, same sort of thing. Fantastic. Uh, spread them out a little bit. I don't want to touch them. Do, do you know roughly where I'm going with this? Yeah. So no, this like... would be a bit of a surprise. It's that one. Tell you what, we'll mix it up again. <laughs> Do it again, Matt. <laughs> you good? You find good. The first time I do that, <clears throat> I do it really quick because that's the best odds I'm going to get. And I have to take it a little bit more seriously. Are you thinking? 
You know which about one it's under? What? Do you know which one it's under? Yes. By the way, this whole company revolves around me going out and performing and being a magician, right? So if I Which requires using your hands. Yeah, so basically you, you lose Can we not your get Jack to do this it? up. Right, hang on. Can you not just tell Jack which one to do? <laughs> just say yes each time. Is it under that one? Yeah. Is it under that one? Yeah. Is it under that one? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Do it again. <laughs> That's my wife. She literally <laughs> psychically knows what I'm doing. She yeah, she's me... calling you to tell you to stop being a tit. Are you ready? No. Is it under this one? Say yes each time. Is it under this one? Yes. 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 I've done this enough now to know that there's two types of people when I do this. There's people that are literally sitting on the edge of their seat, desperately scared that I'll injure my hand. And then there's a larger quantity of people that are sitting at home watching this, desperately hoping that I injure my hand. Spread them out a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay, here we go. Hey, would you please oh, I don't stop? like it. <laughs> <laughs> There's a time tested way to make sure I know which one it is. Eeny meeny miny mo. Are you fucking kidding? <laughs> if it squeals, let it go. Matthew says this one is not the one to hit your hand on. There we go. Ta da. I see no purpose in doing that trick at all. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's no win in that for no, any that. for anyone. <laughs> there you go. Don't, so you know we're doing this mat entry. That's the trick I'm going to teach you. Don't do that again. No, I'm not. You are. Anyway, that's. Uh, I'm not doing it. Yes, you are. I'm mental. Gonna, I'm going to teach you. So there you go. That's a performance of, uh, of of the Wayne Dobson version of the smash and stab routine. Uh, I mean, it is what it is. Like I say, uh, the, the real big benefits of this is that literally it takes up that pocket space. That's all it takes up. That much pocket space and you're good to go. It also uh, just needs the four little source holders that you saw in the routine. Uh, the other thing is presentationally, it's a little bit different to, I mentioned nailed it. I mentioned the pain game. I mentioned shattered. With all of those three routines, the the, uh, the method means that the spectator can pick the bag. So the whole idea is that you mix up the bags with one of which has a spike. You mix up the um, uh, the bags without looking. The spectator doesn't look. You don't look. Nobody knows where it is. They the audience can pick which hand you smash the uh, your ha uh, They can pick which bag you smash your hand down on. So the presentationally, the whole idea there is the audience are somehow able to steer you towards a safe decision, and you can. Uh, played off as influence or coincidence or however you want to. With this, that's not the case. What you have here is you have a system that allows you to know immediately where the dangerous base plate is. Uh, and I say immediately because as soon as I turn around, I'm going to know exactly where that base place is. So this system allows me to um, smash my hand down and make it completely safe um, but I'm not letting the audience do it because I can't control the audience's choice. So the presentationally, what happens with this, as you saw in the presentation, is I'm trying to, you know, use my psychic powers or whatever to steer me to the safe plate every single time. Um, so it's very different presentationally. That's something that you need to be aware of. But, I mean, <coughs> talk about pack small and plays big. 
you know, I'm filming this around about Halloween at the moment. And, you know, that, that you've always got those clients that, that email in and go, hey, I want a magician, but I want a little bit of danger. And it's kind of like, as a close-up magician, how much danger can you provide? Well, okay, I'll use a pack of cards and I'll make sure I give myself a paper cut. You know, there's only so much danger you can actually give yourself. This has a real uh, sense of danger. But uh, once again, I have to reiterate, it is not safe in terms of it's down to human error. If you are having an off day, if you are not concentrating, if you're drunk or whatever it may be, you could get this wrong. And if you do get it wrong, you're going to hurt your hand. However, all I can tell you is I've been using this throughout my career for probably around about 20 years now. No, not that long. Uh, 15 years, something like that. I've probably had this for about 15 years and I have never got it wrong. And it's never been an issue because I've always treated it with the respect it deserves. And I've always been super focused on making sure that I make the right decisions when I'm actually doing the routine. Um, but if you're wanting something that you can literally put in your pocket, it packs small and it plays big. If you want to take this reminds me a little bit of the uh, world's most dangerous card trick by Mario Moranis. You know, this it's that sort of thing. It's 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 the sort of thing that you don't see a close up performer do very often. Obviously, you need a table. But if you're working a restaurant, this is a great thing to do. Uh, one of the restaurants I used to work back in the day when I did this, they would make this a feature. They actually even did chalkboards. You know, outside restaurants, you can have chalkboards. They actually had a chalkboard of this routine and people used to come come in to watch me do this and they used to uh, you know kind of play up the fact that hey at any moment the magician that's performing in this restaurant could injure his hand um so yeah i mean you want to put danger in your act this is the way to do it you know and again it's the perfect example of a hidden gems this has been around since time began and uh it's an incredible routine to do uh, you know if you've ever seen wayne dobson do this or do the stage version you'll know how amazing it is that it plays when wayne does it it's one of those routines that you don't really need to be a great performer you just introduce these props and explain what you're going to do and there's a heightened element of danger and there's a heightened element of excitement and that's what you need a lot of the time right so uh it definitely the definition of a hidden gem this is something that uh uh, works really, really well. You just need to be very careful. So there you go, guys. That's another Hidden Gems in the bag. Do me a favor. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. You want to see more videos like this, like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. I'm going to be back again tomorrow at nine o'clock with another video. Don't forget, if you want to join The Netrix, it's www.thenetrix.com. We've recently just put up eight or nine videos from Wayne Goodman, some theory videos, some tricks, and they are absolutely amazing. The best is yet to come. We've got some amazing stuff lined up over the next four or five weeks so watch out for that but one more time guys thank you once again for joining me right here on magic tv hit subscribe if you haven't and i'll see you again soon my name's craig from magic tv mm -hmm.